The girl's belly is getting bigger at an extremely rapid pace. It takes her only 20 minutes to go from conception to giving birth. Strangely enough, just a few hours ago, she was a six-year-old little girl. Hi, welcome to Q Recaps, today I will explain the film old from 2021. This is a lucky family, parents Guy and Priska, and their children, Maddox and Trent. A few days ago, they hit the jackpot, which is a free trip to a resort. As this family arrives at the resort, the staff happily welcomes them. Their hotel assistant, Madrid, hands them welcome cocktails and leads the children to the candy station. There, the children meet Idlib, the nephew of the resort manager. Upon arriving in the room, Guy notices the name of Warren Pharmaceuticals printed on the hotel's promotional page, but he doesn't mind. Later, the family heads to the beach. Trent and Idlib walk around, introducing themselves to other guests, including which is a police officer. During a truth-telling game, Idlib admits that he has no friends. Trent insists that they are friends, and that they can keep in touch even after he leaves the resort. That night, Guy and Priska discuss their relationship. This vacation is supposed to be their family's last gathering before the divorce. Guy hopes that Priska will reconsider the divorce because of her recent health problems. However, Priska insists that her illness has nothing to do with their failing marriage. The children listen to their parents quarrel from another room. They have used to their parents' arguments. To distract themselves, Trent opens Idlib's letter, which contains a cipher represented by patterns. Trent deciphers the code and finds that Idlib has challenged him to an ice cream eating contest. At dawn, a woman undresses on a secluded beach, luring her companion before diving into the water. In the morning, the resort manager recommends a private beach area to the Kappa family. The beach is located within a nature reserve and surrounded by beautiful rocks. It's not typically open to the public and only introduced to a select few tourists. The Kappas happily accept. After their conversation, the manager finds Idlib and pulls him aside. At the same time, another guest, Patricia, starts having a seizure, convulsing uncontrollably. Her husband, Jaron, and another guest, a surgeon named Charles, attend to her. Eventually, Patricia recovers, and Madrid offers her a drink to calm her down. Later, the Kappa family waits in a minivan to be taken to the secluded spot. While there, Trent notices that Idlib has left him another note in his bag. Joining them are Charles and his mother, Agnes, his wife, Crystal, and their daughter, Kara. The driver takes them to the private area and gives them picnic supplies for the trip, which includes a substantial amount of food. Guy is puzzled by this, but the driver explains that growing children need lots of food. The driver instructs them on how to get to the beach and tells them he would come back to pick them up at 5 in the afternoon. The guests thoroughly enjoy the walk into the nature reserve, which offers them a view of a beautiful canyon, until they finally reach the private beach. The sea extends as far as the eye can see, backed by rocks, making for a very beautiful scene. As Charles is setting up the beach umbrellas, he notices another man nearby and decides to set up elsewhere. When Crystal removes her swimsuit, Charles glances at the man, uneasy about him seeing his wife. The kids play on the beach, while Prisca reads a book on the shore. Matos notices another guest and recognizes him as a rapper known as Midsize Sedan. Maddox is excited about the rapper, but Guy tells her not to disturb him as he might be on vacation. Kara bonds with the Kappa children. In the afternoon, the kids go on an adventure on the beach, the girls find old dolls buried in the sand, left behind by other kids. During a game of hide and seek, Trent hides behind a massive rock in the water, when a body suddenly floats towards him. Charles and Guy pull the woman out of the water, while Prisca takes the kids away from the scene. Midsize Sedan approaches them while having a nosebleed, recognizing the dead woman as his companion. Agnes complains about feeling unwell due to the situation. Trent also complains that his shorts feel tight, so Prisca suggests that he loosen them, though she pauses when looking at her son, noticing that the swimming shorts have indeed shrunk, or rather, her son has grown. Charles attempts to contact the resort, but there is no signal on the beach. Suddenly, Patricia and Jaron arrive, so Guy insists on catching up with the resort driver. However, Jaron claims that the driver has already left. They explain that they found a body on the beach, and Charles accuses midsize sedan of harming the woman, thinking that his nosebleed is because the woman tried to defend herself. The argument stops when Crystal calls Charles to help his mother. Jaron walks back to the canyon, hoping to get a signal elsewhere, but as soon as he steps into the canyon, he suddenly feels dizzy. A few minutes later, Jaron wakes up on the shore. Patricia explains that he stumbled out of the canyon, appearing in pain, and then passed out. Charles checks on his mother, who is shocked by what happened. Agnes insists that she's fine, and Charles should focus on helping others. Prisca approaches Charles, requesting help for Trent, as she feels there's something wrong with the children's bodies. But Charles insists that Trent is fine, seeing him playing with Kara in the distance. Eventually, Charles and Prisca walk towards the children, but Crystal calls her husband back because Agnes has stopped breathing, peacefully passing away. Charles tries to revive his mother, but to no avail. He feels grief over his mother's death, believing her heart stopped due to shock. 
Patricia and Jaren introduce themselves to Trent and Maddox, diverting the children's attention. Jaren assumes Trent is already 11 years old, but the boy claims he's only 6 years old. Maddox insists that he's telling the truth, but Jaren thinks the children are just playing with him. Prisca arrives, searching for her children but is shocked to see them suddenly grown up. Suddenly, Charles sees mid-sized sedan sprinting back into the canyon. He chases after him, but as they enter, both men become disoriented and pass out. Soon, they all wake up on the shore. Prisca insists that they must take the children to the hospital, so they plan to find another way out of the beach. The adults stick together, attempting to go through the canyon once again, but they all black out. Prisca is terrified, believing something has happened to the children, including Kara. She insists that Charles check on the children, but instead, they witness Charles slashing mid-sized Sedan's cheek with a knife. Charles claims he thought the man was going to harm him and then casually apologizes. Jalen examines mid-sized Sedan and finds that his wound is already healed. Terrified, mid-sized Sedan finally reveals how he went on vacation due to an illness. He encountered the woman at the resort, and they talked about their illnesses. She went swimming in the ocean earlier this morning, and that was the last time he saw her alive. Later, Charles confirms that all the children have suddenly grown up. Agnes' dog also suddenly passed away. Jalen suggests swimming against the current to the other side of the beach for help, but there is no response because it is too dangerous. It is then that mid-sized sedan shares his real name, Brandon, with Maddox. He was recently diagnosed with a rare blood disease. Patricia, a psychologist, gathers everyone together to try to figure out why they are there. During this time, Guy reveals that Prisca has a stomach tumor, which shocks their children. Nurse Jalen examines her tumor, but she suddenly faints. Charles touches the tumor on her stomach and realizes it's growing. Charles suggests removing the tumor now, but Guy hesitates. He knows the tumor could kill Prisca, but ultimately agrees. Just before making the incision, Charles suddenly mentions a movie, confusing everyone. Crystal tells him to focus, and he cuts open Prisca's skin, but the wound immediately closes. Jaren suggests trying again, and they hold the skin open to prevent it from closing. Charles continues to behave strangely, still inquiring about the movie's details, so Jaren guides Charles to cut open Prisca's abdomen while others hold the wound open. Soon, they remove the tumor, and Prisca's body immediately heals. Some time later, Prisca wakes up and says she feels much better, which brings joy to everyone. Meanwhile, mid-sized sedan examines the woman's body and is shocked to find it already decomposed. Prisca, being involved in archaeological excavation work, estimates that the corpse has been dead for at least seven years. Based on this, they conclude that time is different on this beach. Prisca calculates that half an hour on the beach ages them by approximately a year. Jaren adds that the driver brought so much food because the children are always hungry and their weight keeps increasing, so the driver must know the secret of the beach. He speculates that the rocks around the beach are accelerating their cellular processes. Therefore, when they leave, they will black out because their bodies cannot readjust to the normal pace. He suggests walking slowly through the canyon, taking breaks to allow their bodies to readapt to the average cellular speed. This way, they can leave the beach by sacrificing 20 years of life, but the sacrifice is significant, making it difficult to decide. While discussing this matter, Trent and Kara spend some time in the tent, sharing how their feelings have changed. When they leave the tent, they have grown into young adults. To the horror of the adults, Kara is suddenly pregnant. Maddox tries to calm everyone down as Jaren calculates that Kara will give birth soon. During this time, Charles continues to ramble about the movie. Jaren has Kara lie down on a blanket as her belly grows larger. Minutes later, Kara is terrified because the baby is about to be born. As Charles falls into contemplation, Crystal panics and runs into the canyon, hoping to find help. However, she faints as soon as she enters the canyon. When she wakes up, the baby has been born. Upon hearing the baby's cry, everyone falls silent. However, the crying immediately stops. The baby dies within seconds without eating anything. Trent angrily throbs, and Kara cries in shock. Crystal pleads with her husband to help them escape, but Charles remains indifferent. Suddenly, he pulls out a knife and threatens Jaren to leave his block. Then he turns to Crystal and asks her to put on makeup. Crystal, feeling agitated, runs away. Maddox finds Crystal crying alone. Crystal shares that she once fell in love with a man named Giuseppe, but he was neither handsome nor wealthy, so she left him. She admits that since they arrived at the beach, she has been thinking about Giuseppe. Their conversation is interrupted by Patricia's scream. Charles repeatedly stabs mid-sized sedan and casually walks away. Apparently, Charles deals with intermittent mental illness, which is why he came here to relax. Jaren and Guy slowly remove the knife from Charles to prevent further incidents. As dusk approaches, Jaren decides to swim out to sea to seek help. He kisses Patricia goodbye before he departs. While waiting for him, Guy realizes that a member from each of their groups has fallen ill. Prisca recounts how she discovered this place after participating in a pharmacy raffle. Since the resort fulfills all their needs, including air travel, the resort can make them disappear without a trace. Later, 
Maddox confronts her mother about the divorce. Prisca claims she wants to leave them to spare them from her illness, but Maddox suspects she is seeing someone else. Prisca admits this, breaking her daughter's heart. She assures Maddox that she feels differently now, but Maddox insists she needs time to sort out her feelings. Maddox walks into the sea to calm her emotions. When she feels the waves lapping against her back, she encounters Jaren's body. Guy and Trent bring Jalen to the shore, but it is too late. Patricia grieves over her husband's death. They speculate that swimming out to sea would also result in their blackout. Trent and Kara distance themselves from the group, troubled by the thought of dying on the beach without truly experiencing life. To help her move forward, Trent takes the body of their child away from Kara and buries it in the sand. As he does this, Kara starts climbing the cliff. Trent tries to catch up to her, but his parents stop him. Despite everyone's protests, Kara insists she must find a way to escape the beach. Soon, Kara is at the ledge, but she stops. Trent screams, assuming she has fainted. Kara then falls off the cliff, and Trent is heartbroken when he sees her body. Desperate to escape, Patricia ties several pool noodles together, hoping they will help her float as she swims out. However, she falls and experiences multiple seizures until she passes away. As Guy looks at Patricia's body, his vision begins to blur. His aging is causing his eyes to deteriorate. Meanwhile, Crystal is looking for her daughter, unaware that Kara has already died. Crystal sees that her back has become hunched due to calcium deficiency. By nightfall, Guy finally reveals to Prisca that he has seen the messages from her lover. He is not upset about her infidelity, but scolds her for the choice of who she has been unfaithful with. However, Prisca assures him that she wants to be with him now. While searching through discarded items on the beach, Maddox finds a notebook filled with theories about the beach. The author theorizes that the magnetic forces on the beach and the special mineral inside the rocks are causing the cells to age rapidly. Hearing this, Trent thinks that if they can create a metal protective device like those used in X-rays to prevent the magnetic force from affecting them, they can escape. He looks at the nearby scenery and sees something twinkling, believing it is a camera recording them. At night, Guy hears sounds coming from the darkness, but Prisca, who is gradually losing her hearing, doesn't notice. Charles comes and begins to hack at Guy to prevent him from telling the police that he has killed midsize sedan. Because Guy has lost his vision, he is unable to fight back. Prisca tries to protect her husband, but he pushes her away, instructing her to ensure the safety of their children. Prisca finds the children and has them hide. Maddox and Trent hide in a cave, discovering Crystal crying over her condition. Her body has become twisted and horrible due to the after effects of plastic surgery. She throws rocks at them, insisting they shouldn't look at her. After confirming Kara's death, she is devastated and raises a heavy stone to throw at Trent. However, her bones break and rapidly heal at the wrong angle. Crystal twists her body continuously during the process of her body breaking down, until at last, her heart stops. Outside, Prisca finds a weapon and fends off Charles. His wounds heal, but the rust on Prisca's knife quickly poisons his blood. The poison spreads throughout his body until he dies. Trent and Maddox meet up with their parents by the fire, who are the only survivors. Hours later, Prisca and Guy look very old, so Trent and Maddox do their best to keep them comfortable. Soon, Guy forgets what he and his wife were arguing about, he no longer cares. The couple reconciles minutes before they die. In the morning, Trent and Maddox have grown even older. They are unsure whether they should try to leave, but the siblings decide to make a sandcastle before leaving. While making the sandcastle, Trent remembers the coded message that Idlib had given him, and Maddox encourages him to decipher it. When Trent deciphers the message, he reads that Idlib's uncle doesn't like coral. Trent thinks this is a clue and wonders if the coral will protect them. The siblings swim into the sea and discover a tunnel in a wall with coral. They swim into the tunnel, but Maddox's clothes get caught. Trent tries to rescue his sister but struggles to free her. Meanwhile, the resort's driver is watching the sea from a camera. He doesn't see the siblings come up from the water, so he reports over the phone that they have drowned. He concludes that all subjects of Trial 73 have died. Later, the driver heads into a research institution for a pharmaceutical company named Warren Warren. A scientist named Sidney reports to the resort manager that most of the computers of former guests have been wiped clean, leaving no trace that they visited the resort. The manager holds a moment of silence for the guests who died due to Trial 73. He then assures the workers that because of the discovery of the beach, the medicines they produced have saved millions of lives. Sydney subsequently announces that they had given Patricia seizure medicine through her welcome cocktail. This medicine effectively prevented her seizures throughout most of her time on the beach, equating to 16 years. Because of this, they can now fast-track the distribution of the medicine. The company uses the effects of the beach to conduct clinical trials within hours that would otherwise take years. Back at the resort, the manager finds Idlib waiting for his friends. He insists that Trent and Maddox have already gone home, and so he suggests he makes friends with other children at the resort. Meanwhile, someone approaches a police officer vacationing at the resort. 
The man hands the police officer a notebook while the resort manager welcomes new guests whom he intends to use as new test subjects. Madrid offers them welcome cocktails, but someone knocks the drinks from her hands. To their surprise, Trent and Maddox have arrived at the resort. The police officer has confirmed that the people listed in the notebook are missing. Idlib approaches the adult Trent, confirming that he's his friend when Trent shows him the coded message he gave them. Earlier, Trent and Maddox managed to surface momentarily for air before swimming away from the beach, thus avoiding the driver's gaze when he checked on them. With the help of the police officer, the pharmaceutical company has been shut down. The siblings will be sent to their aunt, and Maddox is optimistic that they will be okay. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.